Here we are, we're back again. We are. Yes. <sighs> Have you had a good week? We've had a busy week. Very busy week. Yes. Yes, very busy week. This is our third meeting since last Sunday. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is indeed. Because? On Thursday this week, we are going on holiday. As long as everyone behaves in Orkney and everyone behaves down here, we should get away on holiday. So uh, we're fairly looking forward to that. So what we've done is I've learned how to record the meetings and I've put them on Facebook, scheduled to go out at about five to six for the next two Sunday nights. So they will be videos that you should be able to click onto the link and there will be, as usual, this um, little... Oh, no, there's not, is there? No. No, there's not. Well, I was planning to put that up in front of the screen so that you get the five minutes or so um, lead time, but we discovered when I used the computer that actually it has everything the right way around. So that, which looks the right way around to you, would look the wrong way around. It would be... Um, yeah, if you can just about see. Yeah, it would be kind of like that. So that was no use. Yeah. Anyway, if you're in Bucky, you can get your cup of tea whenever you want. That's important. This week, <sighs> next week, or the week after. Yeah. And still still send your comments in, because that would be really yes, good. Yes, please do. Yeah, you know, because I'm sure we'll, well, will we watch ourselves? We might do. Maybe. We might go out for a walk and let everybody else watch. No, no. I think we'll be joining next week as well. I think um, so. But yeah, I think it'd be a rather strange experience for us. To watch ourselves. To watch ourselves leading the meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hopefully all that technology is going to work because, as you know, we are not the most technical savvy kind of people um, and it's a miracle that we've got as far as we have so far let alone trying to record stuff to put on later but it all seemed to work um, I did a test last week was it <laughs> the start of the week mum's just said that oh, she'll make us watch thank you <laughs> I, did a, I did a test and uh, it was on for about 10 minutes and within that 10 minutes it was spotted it certainly and was comments were made um, but yeah, as you'll see, David, um, I was not on Songs of Praise tonight, so obviously Dorothy and I did not resolve our differences. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, I wasn't able to mine the staff songs, the international staff songsters who were on Songs of Praise tonight were actually miming because they're not allowed to, not sing. Allowed to sing. I so, thought they did very well, maybe, uh, yes. actually. Yeah. yeah, I think they did. Yeah, so... The Sunday night that we're back will be Sunday the 6th of September. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. So that night will be our Songs of Praise. Yep. Okay, I'm just doing this when it's still in my mind because you know what will happen. We'll go off here and think, oh, no, I've never told them it's a Songs mm -hmm. of Praise. I think it maybe is on the recorded services. I think we've already said that. So um, we do have one request that we had very late the last one. So that one, that was Pat, Pat Soppet from Aberdeen. So we will include that one. Um, I think we've got it written down somewhere. And um, anybody else, if you know, if you want a song for that night, just let us know. Um, either comment tonight, comment next week or the week after, or send us a message and we will try and include your song. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, tomorrow morning, we do still have... Last thing I play. Singing play. We're looking forward to that. We've already got a few of the... The um, requests have come in for that, so yep. looking forward to singing play yep, tomorrow morning. Good. Mm -hmm. um, food back again on Tuesday. Yes, and uh, it was a busy week again. Yeah, Tuesday passed. Mm -hmm. We ended up 
25 parcels, I think it was, for, for 61, 61 people or yeah. thereabouts. Yes. So it yeah. continues to be busy. And just when we think it's quiet and we can sit for a wee while in the hall and think, hmm, this is going to be really quiet today. And then the phone goes and indeed. it was very busy. It was indeed. Yes. So uh, Elizabeth is taking charge of that while we're away. She's the boss. So yes, if you'd love to help her out, please do. That would be really good. Yes. Yeah. Any other announcements? I don't think so. No. I think that's all the announcements for mm -hmm. this week. You you don't have any written down, do you? I don't have any written down. No. No. Well, that must be all the announcements then. That's them all. Okie dokie. Well, you can start this off because I'm playing. All right, okay. Yeah. So we're going to song 907 in the songbook. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have lightened my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have lighted my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Count of joy of my soul like the sea billows roar. Since Jesus came into my heart. Going astray since Jesus came into my heart, and my sins, which are many, are all washed away since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart. Lots of joy of my soul, like the sea below shore, since Jesus came into my heart. I possess the hope that is steadfast and sure, since Jesus came into my heart. And the dark clouds of dark, now my path may obscure, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, lots of joy of my soul, like the sea below shore. Since Jesus came into my heart, I shall go there to dwell in that city I know. Since Jesus came into my heart. I am happy, so happy as all night I go, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, lots of joy of my soul, like the same below shore, since Jesus came into my heart. Shall we just share in prayer? Father, again this evening, we just thank you for this opportunity that we have of being able to share in this way. We thank you, Lord, for all the people who have joined us this evening. We just pray, Lord, that wherever they are and whatever situation they find themselves in this evening, that you are there with them and may they have that assurance in their lives. Father, we live in a world that's very jumbled up at the moment and um, we hear again on the news um, of more new cases um, of the coronavirus. And we just pray, Lord, that um, you will indeed be with those who perhaps just need reassurance and hope at this time. We think too of the tragic events of this week, um, not too far from here, just outside Stonehaven with the train crash. And Father, we just pray for the families who have been affected by that. We just pray that you will be the comfort to them that they need at this time. And may you just speak to their hearts and comfort them at this time. 
And for each one of us this evening, we just pray that you'll draw close to us, that as we, as we have this time of worship, that you will indeed draw close to us, that you will open our hearts to you, and that we will be ready to receive the word that you have for us this evening. And so we just pray that you will be with all that we say and do this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, do you ever find yourself looking in the wrong direction? Isabel? Yes. Switched <laughs> off. Yes. I was just looking at the comments. Do you ever there. find yourself looking in the wrong direction? Mm. You know, there is one occasion that I can remember walking into a lamppost. <laughs> Yeah, much to the amusement of everyone else who was around. It was one of those occasions where I think I was saying something cheeky to someone else, turned round and immediately hit the lamppost. That sounds about right, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That just makes it all the more precious for everybody else round about. Um, me being cheeky and getting my comeuppance immediately. Sometimes we can find ourselves looking the wrong way. The other week, I had taken my eyes off the entirely. And I got a shout, Grandad, from <laughs> Seth. He's just over a year old. It was plain as anything. Grandad. <laughs> so I had to look back straight away. Immediately, my attention was called for. We're in a time where there are many people who are looking back, yet looking at the way that things were. You find yourself looking back to some things. What are you missing? Probably meeting together, seeing everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I know that um, when we walk out and about and we're delivering strange times and war cries, we're able to meet with people. There are one or two that say, could you just give the door a knock when you're passing? Um, and, you know, we do see people, but I think this com the coming together... I think. There's something different about meeting people one-to-one, -one, but also then mm. meeting in the group. There's a completely different dynamic yeah. when you meet in a group. Yeah, and I think probably the ones that I'm missing the most... Well, not that I'm not missing... Oh! The folk. <laughs> I miss... She, she could get herself into real trouble I need here. to watch how I see yeah, this. Yeah. But everybody will understand. I miss seeing the sing and play mums and the kids, I think, as well. The numbers have just shot right down. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know we were out? We were out delivering um, strange times. We were in Port Noki, we and um, Mum went by with the little girl on her back, and I thought, you know, it's so long since we've seen Holly. She probably <laughs> won't remember us. And bearing in mind the mask was on, and I waved. Mum and Dad said hello, and I waved. And a big smile on her face and she wave back. Yeah, because we've become TV stars. Well, yeah, I suppose she does watch us on a she, Monday yes, morning. Yes, yes. You know, so, uh, yeah, I miss seeing the moms because we haven't really seen many of them. We have seen one or two of them, but, no, but I am missing the queer people as well. Don't, yeah. Yeah. I'm digging a hole for myself. Stop digging, stop digging. <laughs> so I, I, I do miss the, the, the group dynamic of people coming together uh, and being able to share. Um that it not just being between one person and another, the two of us, okay, and we've got people coming um, with their, their comments at the sides as well. But there's something completely different when we're able to talk across one another, another as well and be able to share and hear each other singing and being able to interject and, and make our voices heard. You know, it's, it's okay for us. Um, you can hear us and we can say, whatever we want fairly well, but we're missing other people being able to get their voice in on the action as well. So we could find ourselves just looking at what was. Yeah. Rather than looking to where we're going, what the future is going to be like. Any ideas of what the future is going to be like? Yeah. Because this is one of the questions they ask on Kirkwall. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah they yeah. ask. Kirkwall Core have a, their meeting online in the morning and they ask 
a different person each week to give a testimony and a various sets of questions. And this is one of the questions. Yeah, and, but I think people realise that it won't be the way it was. Um, and I don't think it can be the way that it was. Right. I, I think there's, I don't know. And I don't know if we're near to that yet, you know, the, the being able to come together. I'm not sure that we're anywhere near being able to do that yet. But I do hope that we are able to be able to come together at some point. Yeah, I, I personally, I don't think that we're, we're near being able to come together in that kind of group dynamic that I just uh, described of being able to share with one another uh, as freely as that. Because, you know, at the moment uh, in Scotland, if we gather for worship, um, we have to wear masks. Yeah. Um, and we as the preacher would have to uh, stand a minimum of two metres away, but probably behind a screen. Um to try and keep everybody safe. Uh, and it would have to be uh, none, of, none of the to and fro across the hall. Um, we miss the, the, kind of the banter, really, between people sat in their seats and uh, the, the little bit of cheek that they give to each other, the friendly greetings and the, the, the little bit of cheek that goes back and forward. Um, that's not going to be able to happen. It's it's all supposed to be very regimented at the moment if yeah. people are to gather for worship. And that I find really strange. But there must be a time when we can move forward from where we're at to move on to something else. Um, it could well be that this is something that moves into the new normal for us. Um, in the longer term, that we don't just stick with the physical gatherings, but we could actually um, have the online gathering as part of going forward. It's one of the things that I, I has taken me by surprise, really, the number of people who are joining with us on a, a Sunday evening uh, and recognising that perhaps there's something that's gone missing from Salvation Army worship uh, in the evening meeting in so many places that no longer happens and this could be some a way that we could possibly allow that to happen for, for some people so we have to look forward but not always be looking over our shoulder there are some things that we used to do there we we saw what was the, the program the medical doctor Finlay. Dr. Finlay's case book, was it? Yeah, it was on, I think we just came across it we quite did. by chance today. Yeah, and the Salvation Army were there helping out. Um, take, it was during wartime. And uh, there were the ladies wearing their bonnets. Now, we're not going to start that big debate again. Okay. <laughs> we're not going to start the, the bonnets versus hats versus... versus. Not at all. <laughs> We're not going to start that. I'll give you a warning, folks. Before you tune in next week, we will be wearing polo shirts because we recorded on a Wednesday when we had just been to the cash and carry. Anyway, <laughs> are we going back to the bonnet? Is that the appropriate headgear? I don't think it is nowadays. A lot of people recognise that as part of the Salvation Army but it might not be the appropriate thing for going forward. And that's the kind of thing that, painful as it was at the time for people within the Salvation Army, that we moved on from. Part of our heritage, but it's not the most important thing. What women are wearing on their heads is not the most important thing. In fact, the clothes that we wear are definitely not the most important thing. The uniform gives us open doors in many, many instances. But for some people, it can close the door. We understand that, we recognise that. But we do have to move them. This is not about uniform. This is about us looking forward to how we can develop the Salvation Army, how we can um, move forward as people who want to love God and serve God 
And for that to be relevant for the age in which we live, I think for many people, the Salvation Army has been accused of still being living in the 1800s, let alone the 1900s, and not recognising that we've moved into the 21st century. We've had a wake-up call. And I pray that God will help us to grasp what he wants us to grasp in this wake-up call. So as we move forward from here, I pray that God will help us, indeed, to see the future that he wants. I'm going to have another song. And 52, number 852. I want to tell what God has done through Christ, his well-beloved Son. How my poor heart he sought and won. Can you wonder that I want to tell it? I want to tell what God can do for sinners lost like me and you, of sins washed white and garments new. Can you wonder that I want to tell it? I want to tell what God has done in Christ his well-beloved Son. How my poor heart is so and one. Can you wonder that I want to tell it? I want to tell what God can do For sinners lost like me and you For sins washed right and come in sin Can you wonder that I want to tell it? I want to tell you what the Lord has done the Lord has done for me. He lifted me from the miry clay. Oh, what a happy day. I want to tell you what the Lord can do. What the Lord can do for you. He can take your life as he did mine and make it on you. I want to tell a saving grace Of God's strong and his warm embrace Of blood that can all sins erase Can you wonder that I want to tell it? I want to tell to sinners lost That Christ has paid since people cost And saves unto the uttermost I want to tell it. I want to tell you what the Lord has done, what the Lord has done for me. He lifted me from the mighty clay. Oh, what a happy day. I want to tell you what the Lord can do, what the Lord can do for you. He can take your life as he did mine and make it on you. What God has done, he still can do. His power can fashion lies on you. And all who trust him find it true. Can you wonder that I want to tell it? I want to tell of us that day for which we watch, for which we pray it must be near a far away can you wonder that I want to tell it I want to tell you what the Lord has done what the Lord has done for me he lifted me from the mighty clay Take your life as he did mine and make it on you. Amen. Well, this whole idea of looking back 
But looking forward, um, I gave Isabel a little bit of warning. But actually, Which is unusual. Yeah. I'd like us to think way back to when we were in training college. Okay, David, if you want to join in. <laughs> hey, anybody else who was in college with us, join in. Think back to when we were in training college. The things that we did, how did they prepare, prepare us for the future? Because that was the whole idea. It was all supposed to be preparation for when we were unleashed upon <laughs> the world. Well, there was nothing that could prepare us for this, really, was there? Well, no. Apart from the guitar playing, maybe. <laughs> computers were still relatively new. Yes, they were. Let's be quite honest. There, there were not that many cadets in our session actually had computers. I think possibly, though, um, and and I did sort of say to you beforehand, um, I think thinking on your feet, and I think... You think that we have all this planned, but we're actually <laughs> thinking on our feet. It's much more fun. We, we have a rough, have we planned. have a rough meeting plan. You know, we know what songs we're going to sing. We never know how the conversation's going to take us. We never know what you guys are going to write. And uh, sometimes, if you see us having mm. a wee laugh, you know that we've read something that you've written. Um, but thinking on your feet, and um, I remember back to second. It's maybe one I don't really want to think about. Second year Easter campaign. Uh-huh. And our group, oh, when when the when it went up, I don't know if any of you are watching, but when our group <laughs> went up, we all went, Oh, really? What have we got in common with any of them? You know? Um, it was the group that would they would think, Oh, they're gonna have some time. Well actually we just had to think on our feet sometimes. We did. Um we had to pull together. We did. And, and I'm not going to say too much about it, um, but, you know, places that we went, um, I don't know that they even wanted the cadets there. <laughs> or one lot didn't, and by, by the time we were going, we had a split campaign. By the time we were leaving there, they wanted us to stay. And when we got to the next place, we wished we'd stayed at the first place. I think that... A split kind of campaign a... was, we were one week in one place, and, one and then the second another. week in someplace else. And I just remember the second place... I think I think the core folk supported us more at the first week. Mm -hmm. At least they came and they supported us. And by the end of the week, you know, they were really getting into it. You know, wish you didn't have to go. When we got to the next place, it was a case of we just have we just have to get on. And we did a lot of thinking on our feet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like when it came to doing things and a lot of things that we'd done the first week, we kind of. Um, did the second week because we knew it had worked. And then when the officer had said, we're going to go here, we actually said, well, actually, no, I don't think so, because none of the core folk are going to come. And we can have fellowship any time. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the thinking on our feet. So that maybe did prepare us for stuff that we do now. We just think, you know, where is this going to go? So, and you just kind of do something. Yes. Yeah, Cathy's saying that on her first year Easter campaign, yeah, she'd gone to Birmingham and she'd lost her voice. Yeah, but she was in our section, so we went to Worley. We did. I spent the weekend in bed. I wasn't well. I, I came on the campaign. Yes. Um, and the poor billets, what a shame. I, I picked up a bug. The joys of communal living at the training yeah, college. Yes, and that. it was. We didn't have a flat, you know, so, um, yeah. Do you, do you remember that time when Cathy was quiet? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you joining with us, Cathy. We do, we do appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. So th there were some, some things just seemed really strange. Um, open air meetings in the West End. I was just thinking about that. That, yeah. you know, that, that was a, such an odd thing to do. And, and one of our sessions getting propositioned. Indeed. And the poor girl <laughs> wasn't ready for what... Um, he said to her, um, it wasn't bad in any No, no, no. Way. It was, my dear, you couldn't afford me. You couldn't me. afford me. She propositioned <laughs> him and he went, my dear, you couldn't afford me. Um, and it was, and I think um, it, it was coming from a kind of traditional core, band songsters, going in the West End, doing an open air, no band, no songsters, guitar, mm -hmm. <laughs> busking it most of the time. Um, and, and again, Although you had a, a, a plan, it was thinking on your feet, uh, we're going to skip this, actually. Would you mind if we skip this and we went on to this? Um, yeah. I think one of the things that 
possibly we didn't appreciate at the time was the fact that there was a variety of views and uh because because we were all leaders that was really difficult um, to to perhaps be in that communal living setting but out in the real world there were so many leaders that we would be working alongside that we had to hear their views and take on board the views of other people rather than just have our own views i yeah. think that's one of the things that to me has come out of that training experience yeah and um a lot of the things we did we used to question why we're doing this <laughs> yes a lot of the things we did they don't do anymore that's just a show in our age um like they don't go into the west end anymore um i don't know what other things they don't do anymore but it's all changed maybe that's just a sign that we get old oh well as officers of our vintage usually say you know, <laughs> when training was training <laughs> and i'm sure what they learned to do is relevant to the world that we're living in <laughs> i hope so i hope so there, there is no way that salvation army training college is ever going to be able to mm -hmm. um, prepare people sufficiently mm -hmm. For, for what they're going to experience when they, they walk through the doors because there are so many different experiences. Yeah. I think one of the things I was glad they dropped by the time we got there was Speaker's Corner. I don't mm. think I could have coped with that. It was bad enough going into the West End, but once I'd done it the first week, I was ready for it the next week. Yeah. I, I didn't um, have much experience with funerals, has to be said, when we were in college. I don't think I did either. I, I think we... We had one funeral um, on my summer appointment and we attended it one other. So when I came out of college and had to conduct funerals oh, on my own, yes, I very quickly picked up the phone to uh, Chris. <laughs> Chris Connolly. Chris Connolly was at Kilmarnock Temple. We were at Kilmarnock South and just got him to steady my nerves a bit and just... <laughs> Tell yeah. me that the things that I was preparing were actually okay. All right, yeah. yeah, and they must have been because several years later, um, someone else from our session was in that area as well and uh, conducted a, the, the funeral for the other half of uh, a couple whose funeral I had done, and they, they remembered me fondly. So I must have got something right, even in the early days. Maybe I've got them all wrong since then, but in the early days... So that was one of the things that I wasn't quite well prepared for, um, but we've had plenty of practice since then. Yeah. So if if you were the training principal... <laughs> it's never going to happen. <laughs> it's never, ever, 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 ever going to happen. <laughs> if you were the training principal, what one thing would you add to the training curriculum? Oh, I don't know. To prepare officers for the real world. I really don't know. Well, I, I think actually probably the advice that was given to us, it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail. Yeah. I, I don't know about that because I don't really know what the curriculum is now and I don't know what things they do and they don't do, but if it was advice, it's okay to fail. And I remember um, our, our training principal commissioner, Norman Howe, say, it's okay to fail. And I have to say, we have excelled in failing. <laughs> we've, we've taken it perhaps to made it an art form <laughs> yes. at times. <laughs> um, we've failed many times. But in doing so, we've been trying. Yeah. And yeah, Mum, you know I've always been trying. <laughs> but uh, we, have, we have tried and there are times when we've succeeded. And if it were not for the knowing at the back of our minds that it's all right to try something yeah. and it don't work out. But I have plan B, plan yeah. C. But we had that, that day at Chalk Farm, a kids' fun day. Four it of was, us went all prepared and nobody came. It was cup final day. Yeah, great day to have a... <laughs> but I learned to juggle and I've used yeah. that many times But the four of us had a good laugh anyway. We kind of entertained each other, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, so one, one of the very important things we learned was don't schedule things on cup final day. That's it. That works for me. Yeah. Well, there's some of our memories of training college um, and some of the things that we, we did and they prepared us. But it, 
some things they didn't quite prepare us for either. In the last few weeks, something's come up just a few times now. So I thought I'm going to have to put this into one of the meetings. So I'm not sure whether my uncle Bill is watching tonight or not. This is specially for him. Oh. You can sing if you want. Ah, uh, no singing, no. was going to be really appropriate for tonight when the saints go marching in looking forward to that time when the saints go marching in and wanting to be in that number wanting to be in that group of people it probably took mum back to when i was about eight and uh, that was the first tune yes thank you <laughs> that was the first tune that i was ever able to play thanks to my uncle bill and uh I can still play that, but not much. No, I can play a bit more than that now. I think um, you maybe excelled a wee bit. <laughs> I've, I've certainly improved since then. Yeah. Um, I, I, have, I still find it really strange to call her anything but that. But Mrs. Thompson, <laughs> Mrs. Thompson, my son-in-law's granny, who was our young people's band leader, really was despairing of me ever learning to play. And Uncle Bill came along with, oh, when the saints go marching in to get me going. And I didn't look back since then. And then back in 1990, we had an international congress in the Royal Albert Hall. There was an officers meeting where they had the officers and newly commissioned lieutenants band. And we were cadets. The cadets, sorry, cadets and newly commissioned officers band. We were cadets and uh, I was playing in that band on the stage of the Royal Albert Hall and they had a big TV screen or massive screen at the back and there I was playing in the band and uh, Ernie turned to Mrs Thompson <laughs> <laughs> and said, that looks like Bruce Smith there and the response was, Nah, can't be. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad I was learning. But somehow I got through. And what I was then is not what I am now. The things I was able to do then are not the things that I can do now. There was a growth. There was a starting point. But that starting point moves on to something far more. And that's one of the wonderful things that I have experienced during our ministry is seeing people who either come to faith or young people seeing where they start, trying to see the potential within them and trying to coax that potential so that they move forward. They can't always see it for themselves. They can't see where the end point's going to be. And I can't see where the end point's going to be either, to be quite honest but we can encourage them along that way. And I would ask you, each one of you, to be encouragers of other people too, to give them that boost that they need, perhaps when they're finding the going is difficult. I really struggled with that. My mum's ears struggled with that, and also Jingle Bells in July for I don't know how many <laughs> decades as uh, we learned to play and as succeeding children in the family learned to play for the next, I don't know, 20 or more years. Yeah. There is something within each one of us that we can all become. So let's look forward to what can be and let's work towards that as well. Share in our scripture reading. Thanks. 
We're reading from Philippians chapter 3, commencing at the first verse. <clears throat> Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh, for it is we who are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness faultless. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things, and if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a saviour from there, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lonely bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Amen. Thank you. We're going to turn to song number 441. There's a path that's sometimes thorny, there's a narrow way and straight. It's called the path of duty and it leads to heaven's gate. While we tread this path of duty, we will find our needs supplied from the river of God's mercy that is flowing close beside. There's a path that's sometimes thorny, there's a narrow way and straight. It is called the path of duty and it leads to heaven's gate. While we tread this path of duty, we will find our needs supplied from the river of God's mercy that is flowing close beside by the path of duty. Sometimes the way be stony and the cares of life are known. But this path that we call duty is the way the master trod. And the smile of love and beauty lights the way that leads to God. By the pathway of 
So this evening, um, it was the whole of Philippians chapter 3 that Isabel read. And sometimes um, we just take a verse or two out of a chapter uh, and concentrate on that. And sometimes it's actually far better for us to get the whole chapter and get things in context when we're trying to read about that. Paul wrote lots of letters. Um, he was very good at passing on um, his care for the churches, many of whom he had founded. He wanted them to, to continue to follow Christ and he wanted to show his care and his compassion for those people. So sometimes they would go off and perhaps away on the wrong path and think about the wrong things, make something less significant than it should be, more significant. And uh, he himself recognised that he was always learning and there was always a danger that he could head off down one of these kind of blind alleys as well. But as we read through this, he talks about people um, pro probably trying to make the early church uh, become Jews and follow their faith when actually he was saying, all that you need done has been done for you through Jesus Christ. That's all you need. You need Jesus. You need to give your life over to him. You need to accept that there was a sacrifice that needed to be made for the wrong things that you've done, for the, the sin that you've committed. And Jesus, Jesus has done that. He has given the ultimate sacrifice because he had done nothing wrong. His life didn't need to be given. For his sake, he was saved because, well, he'd done nothing wrong. But for us, we all get things wrong. We all mess up from time to time. We're all selfish. There are times when we think about ourselves rather than other people we, we look to what we can gain rather than what we can give to others. We look to our own desire rather than trying to please the God who created us, as if we had created ourselves uh, and as if uh, all we needed to do was live to please ourselves. Paul speaks to the church at Philippi uh, and says to them about what he has to do in his own life. And one of the things that strikes me is verse 10, which says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Jesus did what needed to be done. And I want to know more of that so that I can become more like him. We look back, but we need to look forward. We need to concentrate on going forwards. And then he says this, 
not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect. Paul, the great evangelist, the great missionary, the one who spread God's word around so many different people, so many different nations, he wasn't perfect. He wanted to be like Jesus. But he says then, I forget what's behind me. The things that I used to love, the things that I used to really care about, they're behind me. I'm not going back there again. I want to press forward, onwards, toward the goal, to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. It's all too often that we can allow the things from our past to draw us back. The things that we used to enjoy, the things that used to be so important to us. And as we mature, we start to recognise that there's something more important for us. I have to say, I hope for each one of us, that these last few months have given us pause for thought, a time to reevaluate what really is significant and important and help us to set our course going forward from here. Help us to put things into perspective. The things that we were, were so important to us before should not be as important. What should be important is knowing Jesus Christ. Surrounding ourselves with those who care. Knowing that our lives should be given over to Jesus Christ. For one thing that we've all learned is that life is so fragile. So, so fragile. Things that we took for granted and perhaps people who we took for granted we may not have for very long. This life is just so fleeting. I am still a schoolboy. I'm still a youngster in my head. I wonder who that guy is that's looking back at me with the grey hair. <laughs> I'm still a youngster at heart. And yet my body tells me otherwise at times. How I get to 54 all of a sudden just seems incredible. This time that we have here on earth is just so short. And so we have to focus, really focus our minds on what is going to be important for us. What's important going forward from here for you? For Paul, he recognised that it was Jesus Christ. It was the sacrifice that had been given for him. It was the opportunity to have relationship with God. To know that the, at the end of this earthly life, the price of his sin has already been paid and that he can go to live with God in eternity. So what's it going to be for you? What is the future for you as you look forward is it just this bleak day after day sameness where you don't know whether it's Sunday or Tuesday or Friday or any of the days in between? Is it the being afraid to step over your doorstep? Is that what your life's going to be from now on? Is that what the future is for you? Or is it the assurance that Jesus Christ is your saviour? Is it the assurance that what has been done is for you? That the things that you've done wrong in the past, they are washed away under the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray that whatever shape the future takes, however we are going to live our lives, that we'll live them following Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour, and that whilst 
we have to meet virtually for now in the future we will have eternity to be able to share together i pray that god will bless you and work in your lives and in ours amen as we come towards the conclusion of our time together this evening we're going to sing another song number 908 number 908 this always makes me think of uh, michael who is in college with us when my heart was so hard that i never would regard the salvation held up to my sight to the cross my darkness and shame and was there that i first saw the light when, when my heart was so hard that i never would regard the salvation held up to my sight to the cross then i came in my darkness and shame and was there that i first saw the light at the cross And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. In my blindness, I thought that no power could have brought such a marvel of wonder and boy. What was done? That my darkness was turned into light. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. I was sure that my soul was divine. For my Lord, I could see in his love died for me on the cross where I first saw the light. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was And now I am happy all the day. Thank you. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us this evening in our worship. And uh, please remember that. Um, the services will still be on, the meetings will still be on the next two Sundays. They are pre-recorded, but we just pray that you will indeed be blessed by the ministry therein. And uh, on the like the 6th of September um, is a Songs of Praise. So please have your requests coming in and uh, we look forward mm -hmm. to sharing with you then. And just before we go, um, we're going to light our candle again and we are going to um, just share in this Churches Together prayer. For this evening. So shall we pray together. We pray. Faithful God, you have called us to be the people of God. We thank you that your calling remains and abides. Make us faithful to your calling at this present time. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Faithful God, you are the God who makes a covenant with your people. We thank you that you remember us even when we forget you. Remember us today and all who journey in hard places. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Faithful God, your gifts to us are many without number. We thank you for the gift of life and the gift renewed through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father God, you are merciful and gracious and you abound in steadfast love. When all around us seems to shift and uncertainty prevails, we search for you and discover again that you are ever present. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
faithful God, you are the God who breaks down the dividing wall and makes us one in Christ Jesus. Grant to us the strength to overcome division and renew our common life. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Amen. Amen. May God indeed bless you in these coming days.